In this video, we're going to teach you how to play fast bowling at an extremely high level. We'll be going through every aspect, starting with defensive play and then moving on to everyone's favorite, power hitter. Make sure to watch the whole video. Not only will this help us by getting the video recommended to more of you, but it will help you master playing fast bowling and build your confidence. So sit back, relax and enjoy. We are going to be starting off with the basics of defending against fast bowling. When you are defending against fast bowling, there are three very important key aspects. Number one, you need to have good positive movement towards the line of the ball. This will help you to get into the best possible position to ensure that you get into the line of the nip of the ball. The second key factor builds off of the first one, and that is being as tight as possible. This basically means leaving no gaps between the bat and any of your body positions. This is to limit the amount of space that you can give the bowler to get past the bat. And the final key factor is to play the ball as late as possible. When playing the ball late, you're waiting for the ball to come to you, so the ball is making contact with the bat and not the other way around. This eliminates pushing at the ball, which is then going to help you if the ball does catch the edge of your bat, that the edge might not carry to the catching field as waiting. From here, we'll be looking at leaving the ball as a defensive option. We do this when we can't score off of the ball and there is no threat of the ball hitting your stumps. The important thing here when leaving the ball is to make sure that you cover your stumps. Rather make the umpire make a decision than the ball hitting your stumps. Secondly, make sure that you get your hands out of the line of the ball, whether that be lifting them above it or dropping them below it. The final defensive option we'll be looking at in this video is ducking and weaving. Ultimately, it is your choice which decision you take. But the basics remain, making sure that you watch the ball for as long as possible, you present as small a target as possible, and making sure that your hands are away from where the ball is going. We look to duck or weave when we have a short ball directed at our body or at our head that we do not feel comfortable attacking. If you have enjoyed the video so far, leave us a like, subscribe, that would be solid. Now that we have got the boring defense out of the way, we can move on to what all batters enjoy, looking to score runs. For this section, we'll be looking at our strike rotation options against fast bowling in general. First, let us look at the shots that you'd be looking to play at the start of an innings. Over here, we'll be covering four options, two off the front foot and two off the back foot. Let's look at the back foot options first. The first option we are going to be looking at is a drop between cover and point on the off side. That's where you're trying to work hard to get into line with the back hip, playing the ball nice and late by letting the ball come towards you and then hit the bat and just drop slightly away from you into that space between cover and point. Because as much as there are gaps between fielders in the field, there's as big a gap between the batter and the fielder himself. Important to note that even though I said this was a back foot shot, you could do the same thing yep. off of the front foot. The second option we're going to be looking at is to drop off of the front hip towards square leg or fine leg. There's normally a big gap here, especially if the ball is moving around a bit. Make sure you work hard to get your front hip into line while letting the ball come onto the bat and then just letting it roll off the bat and into that space. Very safe option and can really maximize the scoring potential. Moving on to the two front foot options. This is when the bowler does stray a little bit fuller, but you don't have the option to go with a full blooded drive. The first one we're going to be looking at is trying to be cover on his right and get into Middoff's left hand. If you can get that right, there's always a single there. As the ball is coming, you're looking to present a full face of the bat with a slight extension through the ball to make sure that you're getting the angle right. The angle here is more important than the power because as soon as Midoff has to move to his left, there's a single. The second option we're going to be looking at is the gap between mid-wicket and mid-on. As I said earlier, the ball's moving around a bit, so your mid-wicket would be a bit squarer to try and cover more space in the field. So this provides an opportunity for us as batters to score more runs. Again, we're going to be looking to play with as full a face of the bat as possible. When the ball's nice and full, we're going to lean into it and just extend slightly through to try and hit that gap. You don't want to try and force it into this gap because you might lose your shape and present the outside edge. But as long as you keep a nice full face onto the ball, you should get your single every time. Next up, let's add some more options. We'll be looking to play these options when the ball isn't moving as much anymore and the field is more spread. For this section, we're going to be focusing on three more gaps in the field. The first one is looking to hit it out towards the sweeper. This can be done off the front or the back foot. It's important to get into line and hit through the line of the ball, through that gap between backward point and extra cover. The gap is fairly big, so you just need to make sure that you have a decent enough contact to run past the inner ring. Once you get that right, there is always a single. On the back foot, you're trying to make contact as close to your back hip as possible 
with an extension through the ball. This gives you the control and the safety to replicate and do it as often as possible. Off the front foot, you're looking to make contact in line with your foot, with your head over the ball, with a nice extension, playing it late to force it square. The next gap we're going to be looking at is square leg or deep square. How you're going to do this is we're going to look at the front foot option where you can get nice and forward. Of course the ball is not moving as much. You can play slightly more around your front leg and have more of a whip through it to get it to deep square. Making sure that the head is nice and forward and over your front foot and still at the same time. Looking to play with a straight bat and torque contact and breaking through to get it there. You can also do it as more of a defensive option and drop it into the gap and force the deep square to run in. The back foot option for this can remain the same as we spoke about earlier, where you wait to get it onto the front hip and just drop it into the space. The other option we are looking at is when the ball is slightly shorter and we can check pull through the ball, making sure that we're nice and sore and controlled and that the bat is just punching through the ball as it gets there. The third and final gap we're going to be looking at in this section is the shot down to third man. This can be done off the front or the back foot. Let's speak about the front foot first. What you're looking to do is try and get the ball outside the line of your body and get nice and forward, playing over the ball nice and late. That's going to allow the ball to hit the bat and on the angle just run down to third mat. Why we do not want to be opening the face of the bat is because that can promote the edge and the fainter tickle might make it to keeper. Moving on to the back foot option, what you're looking to do here is try and make contact with the ball slightly outside the line of your back hip, but still in line with where your head is, playing on top of the ball with a full face. Do not be opening the face here because that can promote the edge. Hit over the ball, you can hit onto it as well, and this will give you the safety to do it and make lots of runs. I hope the vast majority of you got to this point because this is where the real fun begins. In this section, we are covering our power hitting options. Power hitting can be both aerial or on the ground, so let's start with the less flashy of the options. Up front, when the ball is still new and the field is in, we can play a wide variety of shots that can yield us boundaries. When the ball is nice and full, we can play our standard drives, whether that be on drives, straight drives or cover drives. When the ball is slightly straighter or slightly wider, we can play our flick shots or square drives. Make sure you choose the appropriate shot for the specific ball that has been bowled. When the ball is shorter, we can look at cutting the ball when it is outside off or pulling the ball when it is directed at our body. For both of these shots, we want to ensure that our hands are nice and high to play from a high to low position. This will enhance our power and also give us the control to hit the ball on the ground. If the ball is slightly straighter, but still on the offside, we can look to play a back foot punch. This is the most difficult shot of our back foot options, as the timing has to be perfect to get the ball to the boundary. We have covered each and every one of these shots in previous videos, and we'll link them in the description below. Next up, big sixes and some unorthodox shots. To start off, we are going to be looking at our back foot options. For this, we are going to be looking at the lofted cut and the lofted pull. The lofted pull shot, you are looking to still go from a high position with your hands, but getting your elbow underneath the ball and extending through it, while still making sure that the hands are moving through the line of the ball and having a full extended swing. Also to note, it's important to make sure that your head stays in line and that you still keep a solid base through the entire shot. Now looking at the lofted cut, it's important to make sure that you still hit from a solid base and allow your hands to go nice and up through the line of the ball with the quick hands at the point of contact to maximize our ping potential. Moving on to the front foot options, we are going to be looking at three different areas here, but the basics remain the same. What we are looking to do is get the foot towards the line of the ball, making sure that the head is nice and over the ball. And with our swing, we try to make contact slightly earlier, but elongate our swing as much as possible to give us that potential. At the same time, we're looking at trying to get our hands through the ball in the quickest possible way. Important to note is that you want your bat to follow the line of the ball for as long as possible, because then this gives you an extra bit of distance that could otherwise be detrimental to your batting. The three areas that we predominantly look at for this is over extra, straight over the bowler and towards cow corner. For the unorthodox shots we are going to be looking at a couple of options. The first options we are going to be looking at is the scoop shot. Here you are looking to try and predict when the bowler is going nice and full, you are trying to get your head into line and let the ball ramp off of the bat towards the area. You normally play this shot when short fine is in the ring. The second option we are going to be looking at is the reverse scoop. Very similar to the scoop, except now that you have to get your hands to cross over your body. Again, you want to be trying to play this in line with yourself and playing it when third man's up in the ring, allowing the ball's pace to ramp off the bat and clear the field. The final option we're going to be looking at is the stand-in ramp shot. This is where a bowler balls nice and quick 
and just outside the body line. You're looking to use the pace of the ball with a little bit of a boost from the bat and lift it over the fielders in the ring and hopefully over the boundary fielder as well. We have covered all of these shots in extreme detail in previous videos. We will link them in the description below. Thank you for watching this video. These videos take a while to make, so please leave a like, subscribe, and consider becoming a member of the channel. Talking about members, we'd like to thank the following members for their support. Ray, Aaron, Hammer, Stania, Lima, and Johan.